What's up, nerds? I'm Aaron. I'm Tom. Today, we're taking a look at Head of Mousehold by Fox Mind Games. Fox Mind Games. Head of Mousehold looks like a kid's game. And it's ages eight and up, but just the little mice meeples and all the cheese. Right at the, at the beginning of it, I was like, okay, so it's like a kid's game, but you know, whatever. I'm okay with kid's games. Let's try it out. Maybe I can play with my nieces or nephews. This game is so deep in strategy. It's, so, it's all about hidden information mm -hmm. and like playing cards face down and face up and like, you know, ooh, why would I want to put this here? What do I have? What do I have left? What did I put there? And it is poof, so much more than I would have thought. When you choose your cards, you do put out these little mice meeples that give the other players partial information, mm -hmm. but then they have to slowly like play detective and figure out what card you may have placed there because each round, the speed of the mice changes. So like if you picked white mice this round, they may be fast, but if you picked them in a different round and they're kind of like a medium of the pack, they're like, oh, he must be trying to be the second one there. He's trying to actually get the cheese. The, the basics of the game is there's a couple different mouse traps with cheese on them that are worth victory points, and you're trying to play cards on the different mouse traps to get the victory points. The first mouse gets caught and killed. Another thing that I'm like, oh, oh, dang. Yeah, so we're going to play this little game. And by the way, if your mouse doesn't get the cheese, that means he died. Mice die. All things die. You're going to die. Oh, shit. So you don't want to be the first mouse there. You want to be like the second or third or whatever. Well, you, you don't want to be the early bird. Well, I mean, the early bird gets the worm, but <laughs> you don't want the to be... The second mouse gets the cheese. Oh, look, orange is the fastest one. So you do want to play orange, but you don't. There's just an awful lot of mind games and if-then scenarios. So it's one of those quiet games where, like, I'm going to play something down and go... <sighs> okay. And then you just nod to the first... <laughs> Especially in a two-player game, we were like, yeah. when we played this two players, it was very just like, I'm playing a card and just stare at the board and think, okay, he has these three-color mice out there, so out of the four cards, I can see one of them face up, so I know it's not that, and you just, yeah, you're just like, you feel like you're on numbers, and they're just, just like flying around. I did think it was a little too cutthroat in just a two-player game, because going second, you had an advantage of you could play your because there's only so many mouse traps per player. So there's two mouse traps. The first ones have to be played face down and then face up, face down, face up, and so on. So like, I go first. I play face down on mouse trap A. Player two plays face, face down, down on trap B. I now have to play mine face up. And once I play mine face up back on on A, he can play face down on A as well. So he could always play face down to a certain degree going second, which I'm going to go second on the next round, so it balances a little bit, but some rounds could be more detrimental than others. In some rounds it could be this is a four and this is a one, you know, you going second in that round that just so happens to be that is, is better than me going next round where these are both ones, mm -hmm. you know? One thing that can really like throw a little monkey wrench into your plan is the event cards. Like, after you've chosen what mice you want to bring into the round, you, you flip over this event card and it can either, you know, change who's the fastest mouse, like put the fast one to the back or the slowest one to the front. It can add more cheese to the trap. So now you're like, oh man, I should have brought in faster mice because now I actually do want to win this round. It'll make that round more valuable. Like whoever wins this round mm -hmm. gets more points in general. So it's like a more, more of a swing there. And there's like the card that lets you bring extra extra mice into the round. So there's there's all kinds of like minor little things that are affected by the event deck that can like change strategy. But yes, in a two player game I can see how it does it can get to that kind of like a stalemate where like you face down, face down, face up, face down, and then you you don't get any information from me. But that that's only gonna happen on traps that are actually worth it to me, or unless I just really don't want to give you any information. Yeah, which you could yeah, you could do it just to be a you know, just to be a D-bag. Uh, but even so, like, I, I had more fun with it with more people. Mm -hmm. It was, like, I like games being cutthroat, and a lot of the games that go two to five or two to four tend to be real cutthroat at, at two. In this, it, it, 
I, I just didn't enjoy it as much. It was a lot more fun when you had a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So, like, the, in, uh, the information was just like, Phew. it was a brain burner. It really okay, was. Yeah. It is hard to calculate all the variables when there's more players. Yeah. When you go down to two players, it can be easier until you get into those rounds where if somebody plays mm-hmm. all face downs and you're like, okay, well, now I'm back to or just in, guessing. Or in two players, you pick four cards. And, I, and if I only show two mice saying, well, these cards, these of these four cards, there's only green and purple in there. You don't know if it's two purple, two green, three greens, one purple. Mm-hmm. So even when you get information, you still don't really know mm-hmm. that much. I mean, you have less options, right? Because it can either only be green or purple, but which is it? Yeah. And as round as the rounds go on, if those mice have already died, like, uh, so the first mouse, he gets trapped. He actually dies. You lose that card for the rest of the game. So there ends up being this, like, deck of to the side that has all these dead mice. So you can kind of, like, card count. Be like, okay, so he has two dead green ones over here. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, like, how many, what do you have left? And it, it varies from the two-player game, you get more cards. So, like, you'd have to really uh, metagame it to figure out, like, how many cards each player has or whatever. But that's what this game's all about, is how much information. So, like, seeing what mice have already been slain by the mouse trap. Well, the squeaker mouse is probably the most important. If oh, I can sure. see that your squeaker mouse is dead, yeah. I know I'm safe to play my second thing, unless, of course, your second play, you know. <laughs> There's never any guarantee, I don't think, but at least you can kind of hedge your bets a little bit more. I do really like the component quality in this game. Uh, it's a little bit... It's a small box game, mm-hmm. so it's ever so slightly on the cheap side. Like, these meeples are like feel like really light. You know, just like little cheese tokens. So small. I mean, they're 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 fine components. They're not like oh, it's the best components I've ever seen. I do think it's good art. It's nice and colorful. The event deck is in English and French, I think. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty cool. Like like if you have it, hold it up like this. It's in, it's French. If you hold it up like this, it's English. So it depends on the way you sleeve the card and stuff. And that's pretty clever. If you're into games where you have lots of hidden information. You really have to strategize and really like try to pick your opponent apart and try and figure out what they're thinking. This game is definitely right up your alley because there is a lot of strategy that goes into when you play your mouse, what color you're actually going to play in that line. Because if you see that they already put, they have a face up, you know, the fastest mouse is already face up, then you're like, well, he's going to beat me unless. Well, there's no way. Well, no, no the, well, the face, but the face down. It depends on what the face down card is up here, because yeah. if the fastest mouse is green, and you see the face down card here is green, but then his face up card is green, your face up card was still there first, you know. So there's still there's. I don't think there's ever any guaranteed, like play. No. I don't think so. Not unless you play on your own lineup. Yeah. But even then, like, unless you're like, okay, I'm going to take two, the two of the fastest mice, which are, we're going to say is green, I'm going to play a green, and then I'm going to play a face-up green. And I'm guaranteed to get that one. Yes. But that's hoping that nobody else plays on that spot. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and if it's a high-value one, somebody's going to play there, hoping yeah. that you didn't play a squeaker mouse or that you, that they're just going to get the points. Because being second gets them the points. So you can probably tell based off of this video, based off of our conversations, <laughs> that like head of mouse hold, I'll go ahead and say I liked it. I, I enjoyed it. It was fun to play. It was just not at all what I expected. And I was like, oh, it's going to be a light little, you know, kids game with cheese. Party game. Party game, it's, maybe. Yeah. yeah. But like, dude, <laughs> it is, a. it can be a bit of a brain burner. And you have to play your opponents a whole lot. You're playing the people at the table a lot, definitely. So it is a fun time, but I do want to just kind of give you a caveat of make sure you know what you're getting into. Make sure that you know what it is before just getting, oh, this nice little... I would almost say this is similar to like poker or something, where you're definitely like bluffing and looking at them, just look look at them straight in the eyes while you put your card face down and be like... I'm raising you. You're like you know, you're just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. like that's how it feels because you're trying to count cards and trying to you know play the player, like you said. So mm-hmm. I like it. 
So if any of what we were talking about sounds interesting to you, we're going to go ahead and put a purchase link to Head of Mousehold in the description box down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never be bored. I feel like I was squinting so much that whole video because the lights are like right on me. Oh my god, we cannot use that. <laughs> oh man.